The second rut is a hotly debated topic among hunters. I just did a poll where I asked if the second rut plays a significant role in your late season hunting strategies, and about two thirds of you said yes. So the majority of you out there feel that you should expect to see more rutting activity in the early to mid-December time frame, about a month after the peak rut, or at least that's when it would fall if you are in Missouri or areas like it. So the others out there feel that we shouldn't really be paying any attention to the second rut at all. So what is the right tactic for this time of year? How can we take advantage of this possible second rut activity that might or might not be happening in our areas? So in this video, we're going to go over some of the best tips that I could gather to help you take advantage of any second rut activity that might be happening. Or if you don't think that the second rut is something that you should pay attention to, this stuff will still help you be successful in this whole post rut December timeframe. But before we go over these tips, do me a favor. And if this is your first time on my channel, hit that subscribe button and make sure you click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload a video. Also, I am very, very happy to announce that I am now affiliated with Bass Pro. So what that means is that in all my videos is going to be a link down in the description to their website that is tied to me. So while you can get all the products that they have to offer to help you be more successful outdoors, you're also going to be helping support the channel. Christmas is coming up fast, so make sure you check out all the holiday sales that they've got going on so you can get some great deals on your late season hunting stuff, your coyote hunting, and it is never too early to start getting your turkey hunting gear. I know I've got my eye on a Vortex rangefinder, so I'm hoping I find that under the tree. My wife says she watches these videos and we're about to find out if she really does. And so the first tip to hunting this second rut is you have to understand why it would be happening for you to know if you can take advantage of it where you hunt. Does can go into estrus six or seven times if they're not successfully bred. So usually if they didn't conceive, then about a month or so later, they will come into estrus again. Now the rut activity or the number of does going into estrus follows a bell shaped curve. So the number of does starts going up, it gets to that peak rut, that top of that curve, and then it starts to fall back down toward the end, middle to end of November. Now the timing is going to be a little different, probably depending on where you are, but no matter what, it still follows that bell shaped curve. Then towards the tail end of rut activity, there's usually a small bump or, or just a continuation of the rut when does that didn't get bred during the peak rut that first go around will come into estrus again, or you get fawns that have reached that magic 70 to 80 pound uh, weight, and then they can go into estrus. So it's not really like it's a completely separate rut. It didn't stop and start up again. It's just that continuation. And there's two ways this typically happens. And first, probably most common on public ground is that there could just be way too many does for those bucks to get around to all of them. If you think about public land, a lot of people out there are only hunting bucks. They don't want to shoot does. So those buck to doe sex ratios can get pretty skewed quickly. There's just too many does to go around. The second and more common on the private lands, those well-managed private grounds, is they're more likely to be improving the habitat to make sure there's plenty of food to go around. So with that abundance of food, those doe fawns are more likely to reach that required weight in that first year. And as far as, you know, my opinion on the second rut, and it's probably going to get me in trouble, is... I don't think that the second rut is as common as we'd like to hope it is. Uh, it definitely happens. It's There's no doubt about it that there are does that go into estrus, you know, the second time. They they don't get bred the first time or, you know, the doe, the doe fawns get enough food that they reach that weight. It, there's no doubt. It happens. However, I don't think that the buck to doe ratios are getting that out of whack in most public lands. And I also don't think that enough private landowners are doing enough habitat work to ensure that there is really that much food to go around. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen, so don't yell at me too much, but I'd like to know what you think. Do you really think it's as common as something that you can really count on to happen every year, or is it something that happens sporadically, and you just want to make sure that you're out there to experience it if it does happen? And the second tip to hunting this <laughs> sporadic uh, second rut is you need to go back to hunting those destination food sources in the evenings. So even though there's the possibility that a doe will go into estrus during the late part of the year, they are still going to shift their patterns back to some of the early season stuff they were doing. And that includes going to destination food sources in the evenings. And that's why I think that this time of the year, regardless of the whole second rut activity, it's probably one of the better times to tag a great deer because they're going back to these patterns that they kind of established in the early season. Now the food sources may change, the bedding areas may change a little bit, but as long as you know where those are, it's still the same patterns. 
So your late season food sources like red oak acorns, your destination food plots that have brassicas and grains and greens like alfalfa in it, and even places that have a lot of woody browse are going to be great places to find does congregating in those larger groups. Now a buck will probably follow in trying to find a doe that may be coming into estrus for the first time or maybe recycling, and even if he doesn't find one, he still has to eat to keep his energy up to find the next doe group. So get set up early in the afternoons and try to focus your hunting in on the downwind sides of food sources. And especially if those food sources are those big destination food plots, bucks probably aren't going to be feeling too comfortable going out in those just yet, especially in areas where there is a lot of hunting pressure and they've been dodging bullets like they're running through the trenches. They're going to be a little too wary to step out during daylight hours. So if you can get downwind of that food source, but also downwind of where that buck might be cruising through, you can thread that needle where that buck thinks he's got the scent advantage, but really you do. And you can also try backing off those food plots a little farther, 50 yards or so, hunt the trails going into it because like I said, the deer might be a little wary of, of those food plots. So you don't necessarily have to hunt right over the edge of a food plot to take advantage of that late season food that it has to offer. And the third tip to hunting the second rut is to try to hunt terrain funnels between different bedding areas. So bucks are still going to be scent checking bedding areas for does coming into estrus. Now they're less likely to find them, but they are still just hardwired to check for them during this post rut, second rut time frame. So while your hunting strategy for the afternoons is food sources, your hunting strategy for the mornings should be terrain funnels between bedding areas. Unlike during the peak rut, when I would usually recommend that you try to get as close to their bedroom as possible without spooking them, during this whole post-rut, second-rut time frame, I think your morning strategy has to be a little more subtle, or a lot more subtle. So instead of getting right over the top of the bedding area, you should hunt the trails leading out of those bedding areas, especially if that trail leads to another known bedding area. And so it might take a few hunts for that buck that you're after to come by. He probably is going to be all over the place trying to find, you know, maybe that last doe that's in estrus, or he's just hunkered down, worn out from dodging bullets and chasing does. But once he finally comes through your area, if you're on a terrain funnel between bedding areas, he is going to have to come that direction. It's usually the safest path and the one of least resistance. This allows him to check multiple doe groups without spending a ton of energy. This time of year when they've depleted a lot of their reserves, chasing does during the main rut and food sources are usually pretty scarce, it's all about conservation of energy. So keep that in mind when you're out there trying to find places to hunt. What's the safest and quickest way from point A to point B that he is most likely to follow? So that was three tips to hunting the second rut portion of the season. And while we may not all agree about how reliable the second rut is, you can still take advantage of this because even though there might not be does coming into estrus late or, or recycling into estrus, bucks are still going to be out there, like I said, hardwired to try to check for them. So regardless if they're out on the landscape or not, you can still take advantage of it. If you have any more second rut hunting tips you'd like to share, or maybe you'd just like to let us know what you think of the second rut, let us know down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, chances are you're going to like one of these other videos over here, so make sure you check those out as well. And as always, hit that like button if you like this video, share it if you found it helpful, and make sure that you are subscribed so you can stay informed.